Hello and welcome back to Farming Simulator 22 on my test map on Elm Creek. Right, so this is now the video following on with all the animal ones. and This is going to be the final one and it's about horses. And in this I'm going to be showing you how much money they make, um, how productive they are, all the numbers, so how much food they consume, what will happen if you just feed them hay for example or oats. Um, and a pretty much just going to go exactly like I've done in the last few episodes on, on the animals. So we're just going to finish it off um, and I'm going to put this data on this video for you to see. Now before we crack on with that and delve into it, I just want to point out that I was a bit unwell recently so my voice might sound a little bit different. Um, basically I haven't done as many videos that I wanted to, I uh, picked up something uh, but I am on the mend now so that's all good. Uh, but yeah, if you, if you notice a difference in my voice, it's not because I've got a clone and he sounds a bit deeper than me. Um, it's just because of the fact that, uh, yeah, I've not been too well, but I'm all right now. And that's the main thing. Right, so with that all said, we can move on with the horses. So first thing I want to point out is there's three types of barns. Like, like with most animals, you've got the kind of open pasture, which is extremely expensive. It's 55000 for this. Um, it, it's crazy, really. It's just some fences and a few troughs. Um, so I am looking forward to some mods. That come. I have seen a few where you can have like the horses free already. I think there's one out um, where you pretty much put your fence down yourself and it's just a trough, but even that's a bit expensive. Personally, I'm going to go and ed edit that. I'm going to edit that in the mod um, XML because for a few troughs, 10,000 maybe, but some of them are like 25 grand. And this one, 55 for a fence and a few troughs, it just doesn't make sense. It really doesn't. Uh, but this one over here is the kind of medium barn. This is the one I've been doing my tests on. So I've got all the tests done already, but this one holds eight horses at a time. And then this final one over here, this is the bigger one. This is the biggest one you can get, and it holds 14 horses. Um, and as you can expect, these are pretty expensive. If we just go into the shop, go down to the others and construction, you can see that you buy your animals, uh, go to horses, 55,000 for that, it's crazy, it only holds five horses, 118,000, fair play is a barn, and then 125,000 for this. So I think that these are probably in line, maybe, you could probably get them cheaper than that, but I'd say that this for 55 is a little bit extreme. Uh, but I have done most of the tests on this, but this one holds five, that one holds eight, and this one holds 14. So with the breeding side of things, you probably want to start off, you're trying to breed horses and make money that way. I'd suggest um, having an investment, maybe not on the big one, but maybe with this one um, as a breeding barn. And then try and get maybe a mod that's a little bit cheaper than this for where you're going to put your horses. As you, you grow them up, you, you gain their fitness uh, so you can actually maximize on the uh, amount of money you can get by selling them. And I have to say, it isn't actually too bad with the horses now. It's a little bit easier than it is before. It does take some time and effort. You have to obviously put a bit of uh, manual effort into looking after them by riding them daily. Um, and depending on how you're doing the seasons, I've done all my tests on one month seasons. So basically every day is a month. Um, and I tested all the way up to month 48. Um, so it was a lot of work, it really was. Uh, there is a mod out there though that makes it a little bit easier for you, which is called, I think it's called Happy Horses, and uh, it looks after the fitness side of things for you. You can also get a mod that does the cleaning for you daily, but obviously that kind of beats the objective of probably looking after horses. It, it does make it a lot easier though, and if you're just trying to make money that way, you could go down that route, but I'd probably say it is a bit of a cheat. Uh, to use it but there is a mod there if you think it becomes a bit tedious but you still want to have the horses on your farm so now let's just look at the actual barn itself i'll go into this one because i do like the look of this um now you'll notice that when you feed them it's pretty cool straw bedding goes on the floor here they've got a nice little bit, uh, bucket like on the side for water and which you don't have to put in here only water you have to manually put into the kind of open pasture bit uh, but these ones again like the rest you don't have to put water in um, it's also good because you see the oats go into here and I think the hay also goes there um, I'm sure the oats are there and then the hay somewhere else but we will find out because I'm going to quickly test it out and put any feed in yet for these so they're obviously waiting I completely messed that up kid's not going to be able to use his slide anymore but that's pretty much it you just got to feed them here you put your straw in here as well uh, and then you buy your horses from here or you can manually go and get them from the animal dealership and then just drop them off here it's dead simple it really is the only difference is you've got to ride your horses and clean them uh, but i will get into that in a second so i think first we'll, we'll put in a, a vehicle and we'll start uh, feeding them right so before we feed them i just point out the menu so we've gone into the animals tab looking at our horses in here you can see that groovy uh, has come up 158 newborn 
um, at the moment. Uh, it's only one month old. Um, health and all the rest are just the same, uh, but the fitness in the daily round is what you need to look at. So every time you ride and throughout the day, um, you'll see that it goes up from zero to 100%. If it's at 100% at the end of the day, the fitness jumps up and it kind of keeps jumping up and up and until it gets to max, which is where you want it to be. You want the fitness to be at 100%. If you don't ride your horses for one day, then the, obviously the fitness will drop back down, but you then can ride it again the next day and it will go back up. So the more you ride it, the more it goes up. If you hit 100% and then you obviously don't maintain that fitness, it'll drop back down again. Uh, that, that That's the main one that um, determines the amount of value you're going to get in your foals when you sell them and also the horses in, in general as they're growing up. So fitness is really important in this, and which I'll show you with the numbers in a second. So... As you can tell with the straw, they do accept straw bedding, but they will not give you manure at all. So straw, I, I give every single one of the uh, animals that I was testing out with the different feed types and so on, um, I give them all straw because they don't take that much in all fairness. They don't consume that much. Um, so it is worth doing, but but remember that there's no point in putting a, a manure um, silo down or a silo extension for that because they're not going to give you any. But the food type is pretty, pretty self-explanatory for that. It's hay. But the base foods you can give them either oats or you can give them sorghum. Now I found that oats obviously give me a better, better yield, so I went with that. And also, if you if you look in the menu and try and buy some some uh, horse food, for example, if we go to big bag pellets and we have a look, you'll see the horse there, oats. That's what it give. That's what it wants. So I went with oats for my testing. So what we're going to do is just give them a, a few oats, probably about that, not too much. Um, and if we just quickly bring up the right menu, there we go. You can see that base food's gone up to about there. Um, I could actually fit another. I'd say probably, yeah, that's about right. 6,000 and the rest we want it to be hay. So I'm just going to throw that in as well. Now you can put bales in. Bales work as well. But with me just having this trailer here, it just makes sense to do this. And then in a minute, I'll show you the actual stables bit, which I do like. I think they've actually done a really good job of how they look. And then finally, we just want to add some straw. Now, obviously, you won't be doing it like this in, real, in, in, in your game because this is pretty much cheating, but I'm doing it just to show you what it's like um, when you've um, obviously given them everything they need. So if we have a look at the animals again, you can see that straw's up to max. They hold 11,500 litres in this uh, barn itself, the medium-sized one. And we've got 6,000 litres of base food, so we put oats in, and then 5,400 litres of hay. And that's it. They're fully done. Now, we just have to look after them. And as you can tell, so it does go on top. So if you put oats in, you'll see the texture of oats. But now because we put hay in after the oats, you can see the texture of hay. Um, and the straw bedding goes on the floor. So it does look pretty good. And I do have to say that I am surprised with the horses. The way that you turned out for me, I actually enjoyed it. And I think that it is it's maybe a good idea to have one or two horses on your farm. But I will also add to that that it can take some time to ride the horses, especially every day. And if you've got quite a few, I think at one point I had six, and I was testing that. Uh, it's a lot. It's a big task. It really is. Um, so, with the help for this video, I did try and edit the amount of time that they needed uh, riding, just so I could um, make the video a little bit shorter. It was going to take me forever to get this data, but luckily I found it, um, and I kind of made it a bit more streamlined for me. So, first things first, I'll bring up the first screenshot that I got from my spreadsheet with all the data in, and we'll go through it one by one again, like normal. Um, and we'll actually have a look at some of the numbers. Right, so this is the first screenshot that I've taken. This is like every single other one of my videos. I always start off with the value of the animals, how they um, grow in price throughout their, obviously, maturity. So how, 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 when they get older, how much the, val the value increases. Also about the breeding, the information about that as well. Um, and then the potential income as well, if you're selling the foals from just one horse. So let's start off with the types. So the breed, all the breeds, it doesn't really matter. They're not really breeds. They are, but they just give, they're just in a different colour. There's no difference between any breed types that you have. So it's not an issue. Whatever type of horse you get, you're not going to have a different uh, performance on value or price or anything like that. Now, the food types that I did, uh, I tried with riding and without. So we've got three of the same, uh, but... What's happened is I've done the first three with cleaning and riding, and then the next three that I did, I kind of mirrored it with the same feed types, but I didn't maintain them at all, so I didn't go and clean them every now and again. I didn't also ride them daily. So their, their fitness was at like zero, and, and they were pretty much like just not looked after at all, but I fed them. So I fed them properly, but they weren't looked after, just to see the difference in how, how fitness has an effect on the value. So as you can see, I have give oats, hay, and straw. I then give hay and straw, and then we went to oats and straw, and then repeated that, like I just mentioned, but without looking after them. 
so every five months is when I cleaned them. Um, on, on the riding side, I found that it's about two minutes. It takes like two minutes per horse. So if you jump on a horse, it's at zero percent. It takes you about two minutes for it to hit to 100%. Um, and then you obviously bring it back and that's your riding done for the day. So it does take about two minutes per horse. So let's get into the prices then. Um, 500 pound, that's how much they all cost as newborn foals. You can see that oats and hay and oats and straw um, was the one that actually made the price value come, jump up when it comes to the animals that were being looked after. So they were being fed properly and they were also being cleaned and the fitness was getting to 100%. So after six months, the price jumped up to 1,166. So if you do feed them just hay, they'll stay, stay at 0% health, even if you're riding them, unfortunately. So they won't breed as well, which I did find. And there's only two types of, out of these six tests that I did, only two of them um, actually breed, which was the oats, hay, and straw, or, and also the oats and straw. So I won't go through each individual category, but I will just point out some main points from it. So if you don't ride at all, they'll always stay at 0% health. They won't breed at all as well, which is something to point out. So you need to ride them, you need to get the fitness up, and if you don't, they won't breed. However, if you do feed them just hay and you're riding them as well, they still won't breed. The only way you're going to make them breed is if you feed them oats, basically. Um, and and there's reason, there isn't really any added bonus to feed them hay. There really isn't. So if you do oats, there's no point in giving them hay. And if you do hay, there isn't any point anyway because you're not gonna, they're not going to breed. So it really is the most optimal way to look after your horses um, and to maximize it is just to feed them oats and give them straw bedding and that's what i found you can see that the price is the exact same for oats and straw as it is for oats hay and straw so keep that in mind I'd, i've highlighted in red that the best option i think to go which is just oats and straw and we'll go through the prices there just on that one so like i said 1166 after six months after 12 months it was just under 2000 after 24 months, it was just under three and a half thousand, and then at 36 months, it maxed out at five thousand, which is a really good increase from 500 pound. Um, and then at 48 months, it was still at five thousand, so there was no decrease in value, but they did max out at at uh, five grand at uh, 36 months. So I, I estimate that it's probably the you know the the, the best time to sell. Um, if you want to get the most income from per horse, it's 36 months. You might work it out differently. You might find a better solution. Uh, you might sell them a little bit sooner. Um, and, and if you're selling more of them sooner, you might find that it gives you more income overall. But the, the highest uh, point of value per horse can get is at 36 months. So they do start breeding after 22 months. After 33 months, you get your first foal. Um, and there's a reproduction rate of every 12 months. So once a year, you'll get a, a baby horse, basically. And after 48 months, I found that each horse that was breeding gave me three foals. Now, if you maxed out them three foals to 36 months and they were at 400% fitness, you could potentially sell them for 15,000, which isn't too bad per horse. It really isn't. It's a lot of work, though, like I said, with the riding, but um, it's not a bad option to have. Maybe if you just have, have a couple and you want a bit of extra money, and it's always nice to have the stables on your farm. Uh, so, yeah, it's a good option. Right, so now we're just looking at the feed types. Um, what they consume and as you can see it's pretty straightforward they don't consume as much oats as they do hay which is good because um, oats is the way to go so again I've highlighted in red there the best one that I found the most uh, efficient one which was in the first 12 months they consumed one horse consumed 493 litres of oats or sorghum depending on what you're giving them um, and then only 354 litres of bedding was used it does jump up again from the next uh, period of time so the next 12 months up to 24 months was a uh, pretty much 1,100 litres of oats and 882. So the one thing I will point out from this is they don't consume that much food at all. They really are low numbers. Um, so one harvest of oats is pretty much going to last you a long time when it looks after when, when it comes to feeding your horses. They obviously don't want that much. They might graze in the pasture, I guess. Uh, but the, yeah, you don't really need to give them much at all, uh, which is an added, added bonus because I think the, the biggest problem you could have with this is is having to ride them every day and then also feed them quite a lot of food and a lot of work goes in that in the background of, of obviously getting the oats and you know if you want to give them hay as well that so it is pretty good now the food maxed out from month 25 to 36 so after that i said i saw the same numbers from 37 to 48 um which is technically it was only a small increase from what it was previously as you can see it's just like a hundred liters difference on hay and uh, yeah 50 liters difference from the oats so it's always going to be around 1000 for the oats per horse if you think of it like that you can't go wrong uh, 1000 liters per, per horse per 12 months 
uh, and bedding again is around a thousand litres so they're easy numbers then to work out per horse um, and how much it's going to take to look after them right so this last one's just an example of some numbers again these numbers are completely irrelevant to what maybe you're doing i'm just trying to give you a number uh, so you can put it in your head of what potentially you could do so i've gone with the medium barn and maxed out with horses so if you maxed out you had eight horses in there how much food they consume in the 36 month period it'd be 22,000 litres of oats I'm not accounted for hay because it just makes sense to just feed them oats if they're going to give you the same uh, productivity as what they would if you give them oats, oats and hay um, and the straw bedding they'd use is only 17,000 litres so that's eight horses and that's all they'd use it's really low numbers when it comes to the feed now the big number for me is I try to work out if I'm riding eight horses uh, two minutes per month and I've got to do it for 36 months that's a lot of horses to ride every day that is um, and it equates to 9.6 hours of gameplay alone. Um, so that's the number that you want to be <laughs> be wary of. Now, that's why probably that mod will really come in useful, the uh, happy horse mod, because you wouldn't have to do any riding and you'd still get the same numbers. Uh, but again, it depends how you feel with that. You've got to put the work in kind of thing to get the uh, money back, uh, the investment from them. Uh, so I do understand it, but 9.6 hours, it's still a lot less though than what it was in FS19. So it, is, it has improved. Giants have gone a little bit lenient on that, but 9.6 hours of gameplay is required over 36 months to look after the horses to get them up to 100% fitness. So the next one is about the foals produced. Now this is on a number of 48 months because that's how I calculated it in my first table. Um, in 48 months, they have the potential to give off 24 foals. These eight horses do. But again, you need to rotate. Um, it'd be quite difficult, in all honesty, to get um, space for 24 you could probably do it if you sold your horses it's uh, you know a shorter time frame than what the 36 months but if you did have the money and you did have the stables um, and you, you know you didn't mind having the space and you had like one set for breeding uh, then you could probably um, get 24 foals from these eight horses within a 48 month period and if you got all of them up to uh, 36 month mark and sold them you get 120 120 thousand sorry uh, which isn't bad going at all but i'd probably the way i'd probably work it is it i'd have eight in a medium barn um when they got to the point when they were starting to uh give us our first fault which i think is at month 33 if i remember so at month 33 them original eight horses are only three months off from their maximum uh, age um to sell at 5,000. so i'd probably have another medium barn um, and I'd split them into two fours um, and, and it's easy to do because you can ride them into the other barn you don't have to like transport them in an animal trailer you can just ride them over to the other barn um, and then when they obviously came to month 33 you'd have eight foals but it'd be separated in two barns so you'd have four foals in one barn four horses in one barn and the same in the second barn and then when it got to month 36 I'd sell them original eight horses and then again I'd have four foals uh, that I'd need to raise up, get to fitness. I'd probably do it like that, and I think if I did it like that, I'd probably earn 40,000 each time. Um, so it's not too bad, and it's, it isn't 120,000, but that just gives you an example of how you could rotate them and earn some money. Um, and let's be honest, for the amount of feed they take, it's not bad money, it really isn't. And if you've got a couple of uh, horses and you, you do want to breed them, it is a good way to go. It's not the best performing animal. I've found personally that chickens probably overall give you the best value for money because they're so easy to look after. Uh, they don't actually consume that much food and they just give eggs at uh, astronomical rates in the way the chickens rise in price as well. It isn't bad at all. Um, and then I'd say cows, milking cows are probably the second most productive animal. But I'd say chickens are at the top cows are definitely second um, and breeding cows and sheep as well isn't too bad as well sheep are pretty good um, but horses and pigs they're on the low end just because of the amount of time it takes to look after the the horses and the fact that pigs you know the pigs need sorting out in my opinion i have to say uh, the fact that you feed them a weird way i mean pigs feed they can take any food like that's how it should be you can just feed them anything it really should just be that simple with pigs and also when they breed they don't just have one piglet they have four or five or six maybe sometimes depending uh, so it does actually give a bit more value and worth to it but the way it is right now um, unfortunately it's not going to be productive I'd say pigs are the, the least productive animal when it comes to FS22 so hopefully you found these videos useful that's all the information I've got I've done every single animal type now again chickens are chickens are definitely on top milking cows are really good as well uh, but uh, yeah hopefully you found these videos really useful hope you've uh, enjoyed the information that I provided 
it's this spreadsheet that I've done as well. Um, it's got all the animals in, so each one's got a tab for each animal, all the results that I've got, all, all the tables are in there. So when I was doing my tests on yield and the prices and what's the most profitable crop, but also how to get 100% yield bonus on the field. So I've got that all on one tab as well. So if you look at the description, there'll be a link um, to for if you want to download it yourself and have a look at it. And also it'll be in my Discord server as soon as this video releases. So if you do want to get your hands on that, definitely jump into Discord or hit the link below in the description. Um, and then you can see all the information that I gathered whilst doing these tests. So on that note, I am going to leave the video there. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. It really does help me out. And also, if you're new, don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more videos just like this one on Farming Simulator.